Hello, I'm Cara Dahl Russell, and today I'd like to share with you some information about the life of composer Paul Creston, who lived from 1906 to 1985, and to introduce his work, the Concerto for Alto Saxophone. Born Giuseppe Gutavegio in New York City to Italian immigrant parents, Creston was a self-taught composer. He was also one of the most performed American composers of the 1940s and 1950s. And when you listen to this piece, you will hear why. When you hear his music, he was completely current, completely in touch with, and also a symbiotic part of the artistic and social movements of his day. Several of his works were inspired by the poetry of Walt Whitman. He was initiated as an honorary member of Phi Mu Alpha Sinfonia Music Fraternity. He wrote the theoretical books Principles of Rhythm, published in 1964, and Rational Metric Notation, published in 1979. And he taught at Central Washington State College from 1968 to 1975. This piece, his Concerto for Alto Saxophone, is perfect for the opening of a program because it starts with a bang. Creston's music is known for its dissonances and polyrhythms, and this opening is a prime example of his style. It opens with an almost warlike theme, a powerful theme that reminds me of Shostakovich. It has the intensity of the sprawling Russian soldiers on the march themes that Shostakovich used in his symphonies. I suppose it would be trite to say a saxophone concerto has an urban air, except that this work is from 1944, published in 1946. So this is the progenitor of that urban saxophone imagery. And the opening image that I compared to the Russian soldiers translates just as easily to the inner city rush hour war of traffic and jostling and bustle. The second lyrical movement takes us meandering through an after hours cityscape. Much like the use of saxophones in film noir, pensive and nocturnal, it is what we've come to expect from saxophone and it delivers on the luxurious promise. This was composed when this kind of work for saxophone was totally fresh and just becoming a part of our consciousness as a musical equivalent of those nighttime corner cafe paintings, like the famous Nighthawks by Edward Hopper. We find ourselves relaxing from the rousing start to a slower saunter on a quiet street corner. This central section was the kind of work, both experimental and luscious, that gave birth to songs like Summer from the musical Golden Boy, and also Sky Masterson's jazzy meandering solo, My Time of Day from Guys and Dolls. On a side note, Guys and Dolls was premiered in 1950, just a few years later. The musical styles ranged in time period from a 1930s style, like Adelaide's nightclub number, Take Back Your Mink, as is Sit Down, You're Rocking the Boat, which bears striking similarities also to Rocked in the Cradle of the Deep from the Eleanor Powell Fred Astaire film Broadway Melody of 1940, ranging to the Sky Masters and Solo My Time of Day being the really new experimental piece that was still totally avant-garde and considered musically challenging in 1950. And I mention all this because it's all contemporary with Creston and his music. And so in comparison, this gives you another example of how he was actually ahead of the musical curve with his concerto. The third movement of this work is all weekend, day off jollity, jaunty and jumping, and it's also a technical tour de force. It has the angularity of the cubist paintings of Picasso and the circus-like atmosphere of the paintings of Miro. And again, all of these were more or less contemporary. So as we listen to this work, 
we should try to listen to it as if we've never heard this before, but with those current images in our mind's eye. Here too, we also hear the playfulness and melody of Poulenc. And then we return to the warlike theme of the opening and arousing finish of, if not success, of having made it through again, of striving and surviving. The music of Paul Creston. Thank you. <laughs>